Political correspondent Ed O'Keefe flew overnight from Iowa to New Hampshire through a cloud of uncertainty, I expect. Ed, Pete Buttigieg, you heard, just talked about to us about his campaign's estimate from Iowa. He says he's the winner. Uh, does he have reason to be confident, do you think? No, not necessarily, Anthony. And frankly, for a candidate who has talked about his concerns with the misinformation that the president has spread, and someone who has campaigned on his belief in science and facts to be spreading incomplete facts this morning is pretty astounding. But he needs to do that because he'd like to come into this state uh, with a big head of steam and try to prevail going into Tuesday. But let's take a look for an example at some of the data that his campaign is sharing. The numbers from his team, unverified by Iowa Democrats and CBS News, say he captured 28 percent of the state's delegates from three quarters of the reporting precinct. So that's only 75 percent of the potential data. But he isn't the only candidate declaring victory or some kind of victory right now. Senator Bernie Sanders' team last night put out their own numbers for nearly 40 percent of caucus precincts, even fewer locations, indicating that he was in the lead and Buttigieg was in second place. Again, those numbers are unverified by the Democratic Party of Iowa and CBS News. Without any real answer, in Iowa, presidential hopefuls are now here in New Hampshire trying to find some sense of momentum uh, and, and realizing that any momentum they could have gotten from a definitive victory right last night, at least, is gone for now. As one aide to one of the campaigns told me after we all landed here in New Hampshire this morning, quote, this deflates any potential momentum for any candidate. Remember, the State of the Union is tonight. The impeachment vote is tomorrow. There's a new debate Friday night that could reset the race entirely, and everybody should just throw out New Hampshire and focus, or throw out Iowa and focus here on New Hampshire. That's the words of one senior aide to one of these campaigns. So that's a pretty astounding statement to throw out uh, Iowa, Ed. Uh, New Hampshire's a week away, so what are the candidates doing to get ready? Well, there are dozens of events across New Hampshire today as these candidates head to diners and community centers and, and will be meeting with voters across the state. Most candidates landed here directly from Iowa early this morning, including Senator Amy Klobuchar, Andrew Yang, and Senator Elizabeth Warren. Warren told CBS News, quote, when I left Iowa, I said it's too close to call, and it still is, but I feel good, unquote. But not all the candidates are as optimistic. We're expecting former Vice President Joe Biden's team especially to raise major concerns later today if when the caucus results are released. If the state Democratic Party doesn't produce a paper trail for all roughly 1,700 precincts in the state, we can expect his lawyers will go to court. It'll be a two-pronged battle, a legal battle, certainly, to figure out what went wrong, but also a PR or expectations battle. Because remember, in the closing days of this campaign in Iowa, it looked as if Biden wasn't going to do that well. So he'd like to sort of diminish or raise concerns about those results as much as possible to give him potentially a better showing here in New Hampshire and send him off into Nevada and South Carolina. Meanwhile, some Republicans are already seizing on last night's caucus mishap to mock Democrats. Take, for example, what Donald Trump Jr. tweeted, quote, everyone's really excited about the prospect of turning over our entire health care system to you guys, he said about Democrats, arguing that if they can't even get an election done, how could they run the country? Yeah. Yep, it seems the jokes are going to start writing themselves. Thank you very much.